This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Hey, I'm Tom, this is Aspect Science, and it's possible that we could fit every movie that's ever been made on a device around the same size as this sugar cube. Using DNA. Even like tea. Let's just let's get on with the video. Okay, so we've actually got a data problem. Every two minutes, we take more pictures than were taken by the whole of humanity in the whole of the 1800s. And in the past few years, we've generated more data than was generated in the whole of history before them. Now I store footage for these videos on hard drives that store terabytes of information, with a terabyte being a thousand gigabytes. But by 2025, it's thought that we might be producing 160 zettabytes each year, with a zettabyte being one billion terabytes. And clearly, that is a lot of data. Now currently our data is mainly stored on magnetic disk drives, on magnetic tapes, and on solid state drives that use silicon based chips. And even storing stuff in the cloud is simply just using somebody else's hard drive, usually just in a big data center. But these methods have some issues, like having pretty short shelf lives, needing a lot of maintenance, and also taking up a lot of space. And this space that's being taken up is only going to keep on increasing because we've pretty much reached the absolute limit of how small certain components of these devices can actually get. And it's actually thought that we might run out of chip grade silicon by 2040. So in the pretty near future, we might not even be able to make some of these devices. So ultimately what this means is that we can't store everything. But it could be said that human civilization is actually built on data storage and archiving our information. How could we decide what could be deemed important in the future? And I don't really think that anybody really has the right to make those decisions. So if we want to store everything, how could DNA actually be the solution? Well, by using binary. Computers store data as binary. You know those ones and zeros that can represent anything from a text document to a 4K movie file. And the basic idea is that anything that can be stored as binary can be stored in DNA. You see, DNA is made up of massive strands of compounds called nucleotides. And each of these nucleotides contains one of four of these units that are known as bases. These bases, A, C, T, and G, are the units that make up the genetic code. And we can actually use them in combination with binary to store our data. Let me explain. All right, so say I'm taking a picture of myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> The camera stores the data from that beautiful photo as a digital file on a memory card. And this file can be converted into the binary language used by the storage device. Now each of the DNA bases, A, C, T and G, can be assigned some binary digits, which means that the binary sequence that encodes for the photo can then be converted into a sequence of DNA bases. This DNA sequence can then be artificially synthesized, creating a DNA strand that holds all of the information needed to reproduce that photo. You would just basically need to reverse the process by reading your DNA and then your data would be recovered. Now using methods like this, researchers have actually been able to store and recover images, videos, GIFs and text documents on DNA. So there is actually proof that this works. And it turns out that there are actually a heap of benefits that come from using this storage method. First off, it's durable. Depending on the conditions, DNA can last thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years with relatively little energy needed to actually store it for that long. And it's also a massive space saver. The human genome is equivalent to a few gigabytes of data in digital terms. And our DNA manages to store that data in our tiny microscopic cells. This is because it's flexible and can be tightly packed without destroying the vital information inside. It's so flexible in fact that if you were to string out all of the DNA in all of your cells in one long straight line, it could reach distances of the sun and back multiple times. 
Which leads me back to the point that we could store the equivalent of a modern, pretty large data center on something the size of this sugar cube, which goes without saying would be completely game changing. But possibly most importantly, DNA won't go out of date. Other storage devices do. Just think about the floppy disk. Some of you probably don't even know what a floppy disk is. Let me know down in the comments if you do know what a floppy disk is or not. <laughs> when these storage devices go out of date, we essentially lose the ability to read them, or at least we lose the easy access to the data that is stored on them. As long as humans are around, we'll hopefully have the ability to read DNA. So the storage device that can last 100,000 years can also be read 100,000 years from now, if we're still around. Now there are still a few hurdles with this technology like how expensive it is and how long the process itself actually takes. But with companies like Microsoft and an innovative new company called Catalog pumping pretty big sums of money towards the technology, I reckon it's not too long until you see DNA data storage being a pretty common thing. Until then though, it might just be good for long-term storage solutions. But maybe soon we'll be watching films and listening to music and storing our precious data on a storage device that's been with us humans and life on Earth since the beginning. So with all of this talk of data, you might be thinking about your data and how to protect it online, which is why I'm really excited to say that the nice people over at NordVPN decided to sponsor this video. If you're anything like me, you generate a ton of data online every day. And you're probably realizing that nowadays it's becoming more and more vital for you to protect that data and your privacy. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it encrypts the data coming out of and going into your computer by using remote servers. Meaning that it's harder for malicious things to happen to your devices and people and companies online don't know who or where you are. And out of the VPN service providers, NordVPN is my favorite. It's fast, it has thousands of servers across the globe, and it has iOS and Android apps so you can use it for mobile browsing. Now I use NordVPN every time I'm on a public Wi-Fi connection, or just whenever I need a little bit of extra security. And you can actually also get around content not being available in your location by simply setting your VPN so you appear in a country that works, which is pretty great. So if you're ready to take your online privacy and security more seriously, head over to NordVPN vpn.org forward slash aspect science or just use the link that's down in the video description below and get 75% off your NordVPN subscription. That brings it down to only $2.99 a month. So that's nordvpn.org forward slash aspect science or use the link that's down below. So that is it for this episode of Aspect Science. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment and please share the video and leave a like because it really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. So until next time, you keep discovering the world around you and I'll see you then.